Okay, welcome all of my members of my Global Home Church and all the visitors. Uh, if I always preach hardcore truth, stuff you won't hear in churches for the most part, and what's really sad is uh, the last video that I did was extremely uh, hardcore and calling people out. Had the lowest views of any sermon that I've ever done by far, almost about a half of the normal views. But you know what? People don't listen to what I have to preach. It's between you and God. I'm not watering the message down. And in fact, I'm probably going to have less views and more mad people on this video. Okay, we're going to talk about, uh, I'm talking about two people today who are the uh, torchbearers for Billy Graham. But uh, I can almost guarantee you that almost anyone you, that you tell me who is a popular pastor is teaching false in one way or another because I've, I've outed 99% of them already over the past many years. So let's talk about Franklin Graham and Greg Laurie, the new Billy Grahams. First of all, Franklin Graham has been making about $1.2 million a year, roughly, for the past 20 years or so. He doesn't have crusades like his dad. He has festivals. And his, his uh, organizations have huge assets, and they do all kinds of um, charitable stuff as well. And both Billy Graham and his father have cultivated theological of have cultivated evangelicals, Roman Catholic, Catholics, and other, other religions as well, and threw them into a big ecumenical march towards Rome. Let me get go over a few things about uh, Franklin Graham first of all, and then we'll catch up on Greg Laurie. Okay, Franklin Graham calls Islam a very evil and wicked religion, yet he loves the Pope and the Roman Catholic Church, has them at, at his festivals, reaching the lost, as he says, as well as speaking at their churches. Franklin Graham apologized to President Obama, the Antichrist, saying, I regret any comments I've ever made which may have cast any doubt on the personal faith of the President, Mr. Obama. The President has said he's a Christian, and I accept that. So he doesn't go by, by the President's fruit like everybody else does. He just says, hey, he says he's a Christian, I accept that. Uh, Billy and Franklin Graham publicly endorsed uh, Mitt Romney for President, and shortly after that, all references of Mormonism as a cult were removed from the Graham's websites. All right, let's go ahead and go a little couple more things that are going on or have happened. Franklin Graham conducted a festival in Australia. Uh, the Archbishop of a Catholic Church was one of the head guys. There was 49 Roman Catholic churches actively involved in the Crusades and trying to recruit the those who were saved there into the Roman Catholic Church which is a common thing that his dad, Billy, did, did as well. Franklin Graham said his dad's decision early in his ministry to cultivate broad, ecumenical participation in his crusades, which are now festivals by, by Franklin, included the Roman Catholic Church, which was the best thing my dad ever did. He said, when the Catholic Church got behind my dad, the Protestants didn't know how to handle it, but we set the example. They said, hey, if Billy Graham uh, will embrace uh, Catholicism, everybody should. Franklin Graham conducted a festival in Cincinnati, Ohio with five Roman Catholic parishes of that city actively participating. And he sent out invitations for 9,000 Catholics to participate in the training program to train those who were saved into the Roman Catholic Church. Roman Catholics participated in a festival conducted by Franklin Graham in Nova Scotia. Roman Catholics participated in another Franklin Graham festival in Corpus Christi, and this goes on and on and on. In an interview with Katie Couric, uh, this was 2005, Franklin praised the late Pope John Paul II and said they preached the same gospel. <laughs> he said, hey, there may be some differences in some things, but we preach the same gospel. He loves the Pope. Franklin Graham attended the, the enthronement of Pope Benedict XVI <coughs> at the Vatican. His dad, Billy, was too ill to attend at that time. 2006, many Roman Catholics, again, were counselors for festivals for Franklin at, at uh, Camden Yards in Baltimore. And they helped lead the lost to convert them to Roman Catholicism. And also, he has, he has festivals he calls rock festivals, a rock the river tour, where they have rock and roll music for the Christians there to get them boogieing and jamming. And again, the Catholic Church is huge in this, all the way up into 
to uh, the present time. And this is what Franklin is doing. He's all about the Catholic Church and getting them totally integrated to make a total religion with between Catholics and Protestants. Okay, let's go ahead and go. This is one of the new Billy Grahams. And again, Billy Graham may have led a lot of people to the Lord, but he was doing this Roman Catholicism stuff a long, long time ago as well. And for the past 30 years or so, he's gone off the total deep end, even when his mind was clear. He's been involved in all kinds of, of heresy statements and just bad stuff. Now we're going to talk about Greg Laurie, the other uh, heir apparent for the throne. He endorses and is deeply affiliated with the Trinity Broadcasting Network. That should tell you right there all you need to know. The pastors on that place and the former pastors and the former guests on there are uh, like a den of snakes. Greg Laurie says, I'd be thrilled to have Chuck Colson speak at my church anytime he wants. Huge red flag. Chuck Colson, very bad news. In high school, Greg Laurie was at an outside meeting and fell under the power of the Holy Spirit, he said. And he got up born again. No prayer, nothing. Just got up born again after he fell out in the Holy Spirit. And they, uh, that's his, uh, that's his, uh, how he got saved. His testimony. Again, he's a huge ecumenical disciple. Mixing Roman, Roman Catholicism and other religions. And with true Christianity. He has Catholics and Angelicans at his crusades. As well as denominations that teach salvation comes only via water baptism. He says, I don't say Jesus saves. That's too divisive. I just say G follow Jesus. And that way all religions can find some common ground with me. They have no problem saying they'll follow Jesus. But they're not going to say he saves. It's too divisive. At his crusades, a lot of the counselors come forward at the altar calls in mass as, as fakes just to bait others to follow them, which is a fraud, which is, which is not cool. He has Tyre, the son of Odin, runes on his website in a circle with a star inside. New Age nonsense all over his website and all over his forms and stuff he uses. He says, I, fu I fully support, endorse, and agree with everything that Rick Warren says and does. <laughs> Say no more on that one. Mark Driscoll, Perry Noble, and the Elephant Room all get his unconditional endorsement. And see, here's the problem, my friends. The problem is this. Christians don't look at Christ anymore. We're Christians. Christians. We represent Jesus Christ. They look at these men, and they look at them as little G gods. It's pathetic. They're their heroes. I hear so many people now, all across the internet, just talking about, about how hardcore of a preacher that Franklin Graham is, and no nonsense, and Let's all follow Franklin Graham. No, 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 no. Let's not follow Franklin Graham. Let's not follow Greg Laurie. Let's not follow Paul Kidd. Follow Jesus Christ and what the Holy Bible says. I don't want people saying that they follow me as their, as their mentor or anything else. All I am is a slave of Jesus Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. If you follow the words that I say, what you're doing, you're following Jesus Christ with me. You're not following Paul Kidd. You're following Jesus Christ. But see... These other preachers, and, and, and just 99% and plus of the rest of them, not just a big uh, televangelist, I call them hell-evangelists, but most preachers from the mom and pops up to the big boys, they're preaching a watered-down, fake, junk, pseudo-gospel. They're feeding milk toast. They don't feed meat. They don't give you a huge helping of ribeye steak with a huge load of baked potato and a big side of, of jumbo shrimp and key lime pie. They don't give you that. And a big thing of sweet iced tea with lemon, they don't give you that. They give you the j j, -j of talking, telling you lies. People flock to them because they're big names. They love the big name people. And again, I've said many times, I would love to be the go-to pastor for the media for the whole world. I'd love the media. I'd love to have a setup right outside my house with, with satellite. I could get on and preach to the whole world every day and every night. You know how long that would last? About a week. I get assassinated because they would not. Christians would probably kill me. They don't want to hear the true word of God. They don't want to hear the true gospel. They want to hear another gospel than Jesus taught, like the Bible warned about. They want to teach jive <coughs> talking, telling you lies. They want to teach you false religions and false statements that don't go along with the Bible. They're apostate. They're part of the great apostate. They're telling you things your itching ears want to hear. They're wolves in sheep's clothing, and they have big names and they make big money. You know what? baloney on the big money. I don't have a huge ministry like Franklin Graham. <laughs> I don't get people watching me as much like Franklin Graham does or even like um, Joel Osteen and, and, and Rick Warren and all their, all their ilk. But you know what though? 
I got 85,000 people all across the internet that follow ministries in one way or another. The numbers have, go, have gone down because I've been banned so many times from YouTube. Many have fallen away and gone to other people. But it don't matter though. I've got a huge healthy chunk of people that watch what I put out and follow Jesus Christ with me, through me. You know how much money that I take from people? Zero. I've had so many people ask me, can I send you some money? No. You know why? Not because I'm some kind of a cool guy for refusing money. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he wrote the gospel. <laughs> you know what he charged to share the gospel? Zero. That's it. He had just enough to live. That's all he had. Just enough to live. And I don't take any money even to live because I've already got my own money from my pensions and everything. I don't worry about that. I take care of my business, but I don't take any money from you because Jesus didn't. I won't either. There's, there's, when you start taking money, you start changing. You, money changes you, man. And I had a good buddy who was a pastor. He's not a pastor anymore. He's gotten involved in these huge, um, these huge secular events now. They're supposed to be Christian, and he's watered them down where they're now almost all secular. He's breaking in millions of dollars. He's totally changed from the Lord the way he used to be. You can't recognize him anymore. And he just stiffs me. He won't talk to me anymore. He sees me. He runs away from me. It's bogus. It's baloney. That's what money does to you. Money is indeed the root of all evil. That's why the Bible says that it's easier for the cam a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to go into heaven. There'll be some rich men in heaven. There's not going to be many because money poisons everything. It poisons your whole outlook on things. It's time to stop looking at all these pastors. Any, of, any pastors, any of us, start looking at Jesus Christ. Start looking at the Holy Bible, the King James Version Bible. Start opening it and reading it. And let the Holy Spirit jump off those pages. He, he dwells in there. He'll jump off the pages into your heart. And dwell with you. Because I'm so tired of all the lies out there. I really am. I'm so sick and tired of all these people that are teaching once saved, always saved. They're teaching prosperity doctrine. And they're teaching bringing in New Age. And bringing in Islam into the church. And bringing in every kind of false doctrine you could possibly imagine. The church has turned into a den of Satan for the most part. Jesus wouldn't, doesn't even recognize the church. I guarantee you that. And I've wondered many times about the, the marriage supper of the Lamb. How there's going to be, how many people are going to be there. It's going to be a huge, massive thing. And, and how all the Christians could go there. And I've realized over the years, it's not going to be as near as big. It'll be a fraction of the size people think it is. Because few Christians are going to go in the rapture. You know why? Because the Bible says at least 250 times, you have to repent of your sins after you're saved or you won't go to heaven. I got all the scripture that proves that. And it's also a commentary that a six-year-old child can understand. But see, most Christians believe all the lies. They believe the lies Satan started in the Garden of Eden when he told Eve, you surely won't die if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Eve thought that she would die physically that day, but Satan knew it was spiritually. And her and Adam did die spiritually that day. And if you die spiritually, you fall into a backslidden state, you will never, ever, ever get right unless you repent. The Holy Spirit will pack his bags and leave your heart. You start falling into a, a sin-ridden, backslidden state, into an iniquity pattern, sin pattern life. I'm telling you the way it is. You can believe what you want to believe. I got the proof from the Bible. And it's so sad. Christians play Russian roulette with, with their salvation. They think they can do whatever they want to. And when they're left behind, they'll be the first ones to cry the blues because they're left behind. But then they'll say, oh, my pastor's here. All the other Christians are here. Yeah. They just took those Bible-thumping, holy roller Jesus freaks like Paul Kidd and his ilk. Took them away. Praise the Lord. Good riddance. And they'll buy the Antichrist j -j 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 talking hook, line, and sinker. Time's so close, my friends. The rapture's on the doorstep. I've got 150 scripture that proves the rapture's pre-tribulation. And it's also commentary. Most Christians nowadays don't even believe in the rapture anymore, man. The church has turned into a big, stinking joke for the most part. And I'm sick of it. Can you imagine how Jesus feels? If you've never been saved, i got a prayer. I'm about to pray. i got it also in the box below in the video title in Six Vital Next Steps. Do them as soon as the video's over because no one's guaranteed any more time in their life. If you can't keep up with me, pray the video's over. And get ready before your time runs out. If you've never been saved, you're backslidden, let's pray now. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. I'm back to heaven and be at the right-hand side of the Father to make a place for all your children forever. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. Your precious name I ask it. Amen. Pray that prayer as soon as you possibly can. If you'd like me to pray for you for anything, contact me. I'll pray for you every day. If God answers that prayer, it's all because of him. Nothing to do with me. Christians, share this video. If they won't watch it, that's between them and the Lord. Because again, I don't even care. The Lord will have those watch these videos, these sermons that he wants to. If people are getting turned off by my hardcore preaching, so be it. I draw the line in the sand like the old school prophets and apostles and disciples did. I'm not a prophet, apostle, or disciple, but I preach like they did. True Christians, keep witnessing and praying. If they don't listen, it's between them and God. But look up. Our different draw nigh. We fly soon. Have a blessed weekend. Bye.